So this is something we've been deliberating for quite a while now, well, since Malen's um, decision not to stand, to be honest. And it's a sad decision that we've had to make not because we know that people are clamoring for more choices. But at the same time, we have to acknowledge the lack of traction we've had and the lack of time we've had to really get a team together and invest in them in the way that we'd like. So for Together Gibraltar, our plans haven't changed. We've always had the plan, um, again, since Marlene announced that we definitely want to keep the party going. And we think that Gibraltar desperately needs that kind of extra voice that brings politics to the masses, lets ordinary people get involved and gives them a chance to make a difference. So that's what we're fundamentally committed to now is building our grassroots, kind of strengthening our membership and also giving the people we already have within our party the experience, the exposure and the training they need so that in four years time they can absolutely give it their all and present themselves as a viable option for the next government of Gibraltar. You are obviously the party leader at the moment of Together Gibraltar. You weren't able to get a slate together. Had you put any thought to running as an independent? I have, and as I mentioned, I think there really is a clamour for more options at this election, so it's something that I'm still mulling over on a personal basis and with my family. Um, but as my main focus has been on Together Gibraltar, filling that leadership role and trying to keep us focused on making sure that the party can keep giving people a voice, keep presenting more solutions and holding whoever forms the next government to account. So that's going to be my main aim, really. It is being billed now as a two-horse race. What are your thoughts on the two parties that remain? <laughs> so I think really it's a, more of a one-horse race, really, because the votes, certainly the set impression I get, is that it's either pro-GSLP or anti-GSLP, um, which is part of the problem we're seeing, that it's very hard for people to break into the political establishment and present something different. So seeing your poll from GBC today, um, that there's 40% of people who are either blank voting or are undecided who to vote for. And that to me says that people really aren't happy with the options on offer. Now TG, we have to say, we haven't succeeded in capturing that demographic, offering people that choice. But we still think there's a tremendous amount of room for people. They're just clamoring for something different. And that's what we're really going to keep an eye on.